The Honorable Hans Bogratian, thank you for the honor of joining us at the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy here in Berlin, and thank you for your keynote speech. We'd like to ask you a few questions in order to hear your thoughts and opinions on some prominent issues. Uh, so my first question is regarding international migration. I was wondering what economic reasons can you identify as causes of migration, and what role do you think cultural factors play in migration? Okay, well, in the modern world, uh, we see uh, several reasons that migration is growing up. The first one, economically, the world became unique. It's a global economy. In this economy, you need resources. You need labor force, you need mineral resources, you need investments, you need capital. It's clear that, by example, mineral resources, a volume of mineral resources is decreasing. But the number of people is growing up. And uh, the growth of population is unevenly distributed. Well, the question mark here is whether an investment should find a labor force, whether labor force should find an investment. For time being, we can say that uh, the streams of migrants is higher than the streams of investments, of capital movements. That is why, in the modern world, each second person who was born in one country, he will die in the other country. This is the, this is the issue which create problems, but we have to understand the world is, is unique. When we were creating WTO, for example, making a global, a unique market of goods and services, we have to keep in mind that resources, particularly labor resources also, they have to be become unique. And this is the consequences of the pro deep processes in the economy. Um, what do you think, in your opinion, um, we should adopt a human rights approach to migration. And uh, to elaborate on that, do you think we should consider the migrant as an individual and to be, to be the focus of uh, migration management and migration policy, in particular paying attention to marginalized and uh, disadvantaged, disadvantaged migrants? You see, we can have a different approaches. We can have a social approach, we can have a, an ethnic approach, and also we can have an approach which is focused on the human rights. I think uh, well, uh, the specific policy, a particular policy, could be different in different countries, in different cases, but you know that the domination of human, um, human rights uh, I will consider as a main issue here. Because any other approach based on social or ethnic judgments, well, at the end, could bring us to the situation uh, sometimes we can have a, an aggressive behavior to migrants, but any aggressive aggression will create a reaction. Do you mean xenophobia? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, and I can tell you that uh, if we are going to, if we are comparing different countries, uh, Let's take United States, German, uh, Germany, uh, Australia, or New Zealand. Well, the approach is, uh, well, uh, they, they have an integrated approach, you know. And look, uh, well, the level of the unemployment in these countries is low. Economic terms of growth is better than in the other countries. For example, in Europe, in southern European countries, they started to implement a little bit aggressive, marginalized approach to the migrants. And you see the economy is getting down. Well, despite, but at the first point of view, uh, well, you, uh, people used to consider that as far as we have migrants, is deepening our unemployment problem. In fact, it's, it's not like this. It's not like this. In the countries where they have a very integrated approach, situation is much more better. That's good. Um, the next question, what does cultural diplomacy mean to you? And do you think that cultural diplomacy can play a role in the current refugee and migration problems? Oh, well, uh, anyway, uh, whatever uh, we used to consider about uh, uh, cultural diplomacy, we, ha we have to understand that a culture is very unique. It's much more deep than economy itself. Well, uh, economy is a particular case for the culture. Culture is much more... Uh, much, much. In the culture, you can find a lot of things. Uh, 
similar to different nations, to different people. That is why in the, uh, well, uh, that, that should be a combination. Uh, a combination with considering, having in mind the cultural rules, etc. Mm -hmm. And in your opinion, how effective is soft power to successful conduct of diplomacy? And also, I would like to add one more question for, like, uh, on the case of Armenia, could you please elaborate um, applying it to your country based on the experience you had? Uh, for Europe, uh, I don't see any unique uh, policy to the migrants. For example, the approach of France, Spain, or Germany, they are totally different. Uh, when it comes to Armenia, well, it's a, it's, it's a very hard case. On one hand, people are well educated. On the other hand, a lot of people are leaving the country. By the way, keep in mind, this is a country which labor market, as you, we, we like to see uh, professionally to say, we have a deficit labor market. You understand what I mean? Yes. There are countries with the profit of labor market, profit of labor, there are countries with the deficit of labor. And despite that, we are deficit that people are leaving the country which creates a problem for the time being for the country, which creates a problem. Yeah. Wow. Um, my last question is with regard to economics. Uh, do you think that the European Union could ever reach a common economic policy? And if yes, how can this be achieved? Uh, you, you mean what? Would you repeat the last one? Uh, if, if a common policy, economic policy, can be achieved within the European Union, how can that be done? Well, uh, well, Europe is doing something now. They have already uh, created joint Europe, 28 countries, and there is a there is a Eastern partnership with the perspective of a couple of other countries. As I, under, uh, uh, as I understood, the, the aim of the European Union is to be self-sufficient in terms of labor resources. But this widening of European Union gives, uh, gives a possibility to be self-sufficient in terms of uh, labor resources, you know, especially to find them in the Eastern European countries. Uh, but I think, I think uh, the experience of different parts of Europe are, uh, is going to be discussed. Uh, by example, uh, uh, the northern part of Europe, Germany, Scandinavian countries, are doing well on this. They are doing well. They are doing well in terms of integration. They are not. Uh, they are more. They are not doing separation or marginalization. And I think, uh, well, this uh, this tendency of integration uh, will become uh, a unique total approach for. Uh, all of European Union countries very soon. That's a great answer. Thank you for your time. It was an honor and privilege to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for doing this.